let's talk about mods. Okay, let's have a quick down and dirty rundown. Go through some of the differences, and give you a little bit of explanation, and hopefully this will help you out along your way. First, we have little pen mods. Now little pen mods are basically, this is a battery. It has a fire button, connector to put a tank. Now this is something that I started with. My wife and I both started at the same time, so we both started with these. And these come, usually, in some kind of little starter kit, like this. A little tank, a mod, a little charger. You screw this on, plug it in, and charge it. Now with these guys, again this is your battery. You screw your charger on here and you charge it when it gets low. When this battery is no longer able to take a charge after I don't know how many hundreds of charges, but after it no longer is able to take a charge, it's done, it's dead, you throw it away and buy a new one. This is kind of like the next step up. This is like a little I guess regulated pen mod. It has a thing on the bottom that you can turn and adjust the wattage. These like the other ones, pretty much the same except for this adjustability down here. This is your battery, there's your fire button, place to put a tank, charge it when it no longer takes a charge, it's dead, throw it away and buy a new one. Now again, I said that's what I started with. I was a smoker, smoked about a pack a day. I outgrew those very, very quickly, but it was a very cheap way to start to see if I even was interested in vaping. Now there's even other different starter kits with different types of mods, smaller mods, similar to this, kind of look more like this, but they're real small. But there's all kind of little starter kits if you don't want to dive in. Speaking of, we have regulated mods like this. Now this type is actually kind of similar. Inside here is two 18650 batteries. They're inside here. They did not come out. There's a charging port here. Comes with this. Plug this end into the wall. Has a USB plug. This thing goes in here. And you charge it. These ones. couple clicks turns them on it'll display the ohms of whatever tank or RDA or whatever you put on top it has a watt wattage mode and a voltage mode and it has a battery life they usually have some sort of up and down and a fire button there's a board and a chip in here that regulates the output of the battery there's many different kinds. Each kind does different things, has different readouts. The buttons do different things. So depending on what type you get, what style is what it does. But basically they always usually have an up and down button, sometimes another button, and a fire button. This like the other ones, on these batteries, no longer accept the charge. You throw it out and you get a new one. This one is also a regulated mod. 
this one has the readout here of the wattage the fire button and this here when it lights up it tells you the battery strength little clicker button here changes the wattage the difference what this is when the battery starts to die you unscrew the bottom and you simply put a new battery in so this one on the battery that you're using or the batteries it's usually good to have at least two while one's charging you can have one in here when this one starts to run low take it out charge it swap them out when those batteries no longer accept a charge you just need to buy new batteries you can still use this mod again another regulated mod higher wattage the difference with this is it takes two 18650 batteries again you have your fire button your up and down and your menu will be here if you notice they all have the same connector at the top so they will accept any and all tanks RDAs and RTAs for instance this is a Kanger K box these two are ILEs this is a 50 watt this is a 100 watt if I have a Kanger tank I can use it on this Kanger K box and both of these ILEs and this Cooper and this Cooper so you don't have to keep a Kanger tank on a Kanger box you can put it on anything now you have an unregulated mod this is the tube style they also come in ones that look like this this is not an unreg this is a regulated mod but they have ones that look like this a box mod unregulated box mod but basically all it is is this one is a tube that is all it is there's nothing in there it has the same connector as your regulated mods up here and on the bottom is a button all it is is a battery you put the battery in positive side up it goes on the bottom of that connector whatever tank or RDA or whatever you put on top of here makes connection makes connection to the battery when you push the button boom 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 circuit it does not regulate anything depending on what battery you put in here what output you're going to get to your device to your tank that is an unregulated mod it's basically you're holding a battery in your hand and using it to fire the coils in your tank or RDA or whatever you're using this is not a beginner thing at all but I just wanted to let you know what it was because you're gonna see regulated mod unregulated mod variable wattage variable voltage all these terms so I'm gonna to try to explain this real quick so that's the regulated unregulated regulated mod you hit the button it detects the ohms of whatever you have on top it will regulate the output of your battery to that device it will only let you hold the button in for so many seconds and it does all the work for you unregulated mod again is a battery in your hand and a tube and you must know ohms law and your battery output and all these other good things to work one of these properly and safely so not a beginner thing again but that is an unregulated mod so 
since this is a beginner's video, stay away from anything that says unregulated. Now, on your regulated mods, you say, well, there's a volt setting and a wattage setting. What's the difference? What's the deal with that? Well, in the volt setting, this one's in volt setting right now. Three clicks, and it'll go over to watt. So in this case, 30 watts equals 3.4 volts. Let's pop this on here real quick. This is reading at 0.7 ohms on here and 3.4 volts is 15.5 watts. 4 volts is 22.8 watts. Well, what does that mean? Basically, in voltage is what you fine tune everything to. When you're in wattage mode, if you hit it and it's not quite enough, you crank up the wattage a little bit. When it starts to get too hot or whatever, or too much, or starts to dry your vape out, get the wattage down. Tweak the wattage a little bit, and that'll get you close to wherever you want to be. Voltage is fine, fine tuning. Think of it as a photographer. Now me personally, if you grab a point and shoot or you get a camcorder and you set it on auto focus and auto everything and let it do its thing and you just go about your business, that's wattage mode. Now if you know exactly what you're doing and you know what to set your aperture at and all those other settings on your cameras, that's like using your voltage. So most people, most beginners, just use the wattage mode. That's kind of a rundown between wattage and voltage. Now the next thing you'll need to know about your mods is your 18650 batteries. Now, like everything else, there's many of these. 18650. These are 3.7 volts, 2500 mAh, which is your basically your milliamp. It's milliamp hours. It's how long your battery is going to last. And the 7 3.7 volts is your output. Again, when you have this style mod, you charge it. When it's done, it's done. You need batteries, and you need a charger. Some mods that take batteries do have a port like this that you can charge the batteries while they're in the mod. Others do not. So um, these are called pass-throughs, which means as it's charging, you can still vape. Some of them, while it's charging, you cannot vape. If you get a mod, that you can swap the batteries out, my suggestion would be to get a smart charger. That way you can always have batteries charging, batteries being used. When these die, swap them out, get the ones out of charger, put these in the charger, and you have a rotation. Now the next thing is mods are wired two ways. They are either wired in parallel or in series. In parallel, both the positives go the same way. So in case in this case, this one is in parallel. Positive, positive, negative, negative. So the batteries go in the same way. In this mod, they are in series. The positive is here. On this battery, the positive is down here. 
Well, what does that mean? In this one, where both the positives are up, where the batteries are basically facing the same direction, it's basically like having one battery. We'll make it simple. Say each battery is 10 volts and has 5 amp hours. When they are in, when they are wired parallel, that means that they still have 10 volts, but now they have 10 amp hours. As opposed to when they are in series, the same 10 volt with 5 amp hours, now you have 20 volts but only the 5 amp hours. Again, parallel. The power stays the same, the time doubles. Series, the power doubles, the time stays the same. I guess the next thing is temperature control. We talked about the wattage and the voltage in these mods. Well, both of these mods, this is a Cooper Plus, this is a Cooper Mini. This one has one 18650 battery, this one has the two. It can run in wattage mode, voltage mode, mode or with the special coils made of either nickel, titanium, or stainless steel, you can run in temperature control mode. What that does is you set a temperature. For instance, when my wife and I started, as I progressed and went bigger, 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 she really wasn't into, she got to a certain point and then she said, this is enough for me. She didn't like the hot vapes and the big vapes. So she liked the temperature control. She could set it at 400 degrees or 600 degrees, whatever, 500 degrees. And when you hit the button, instead of setting it at 35 watts and it fires at 35 watts, it will take that wattage and the power from the battery and ramp up your coils. When the coil gets to, say you set it at 500 degrees, when it gets to 500 degrees, it will stop. It will not send any more power. It will keep it at a 500 degree. So that's what temperature control is. If you like the cooler vapes, then temperature control might be an option for you. One more thing I want to touch on real quick Go over more when we do tanks, it applies more to that. It does apply a little bit to mods. It will say can, cannot, suggested to, suggested not to, sub ohms. Above ohm and sub ohm. Above ohm is one ohm and above, so one ohm or 1.2 ohms or 1.5 ohms or two ohms, that is above ohm. Sub ohm is anything below one ohm, so 0.9. 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Uh, you'll see a lot of tanks that say they have 0.5 ohm coils. So you will need to have a mod that is capable of sub ohming. Good thing to do during your research used to be go to your local vape shops and go look at things. But with the crackdown on and all the regulations and the crackdown on vaping and all that fun stuff. I know in my area, a lot of the vape shops have closed. They just can't keep the doors open because of all the restrictions. But in your area, if you have some vape shops, go browse around, look around. That way when you're looking online and you're seeing things, you can go into the vape shop. You can actually look at it, see how big it is. Maybe even get your hands on it. And you can ask them guys some questions. Now, don't let them overwhelm you with information and don't let them talk you into the latest and greatest and the biggest and baddest. Do your research 
and pick what's best for you. Now I didn't tell you anything about okay well this company that company there's thousands of companies and each company has thousands of different products it's up to you to do your research I'm not going to tell you what you should or should not get what you should try what you shouldn't try it's just like anything it's subjective it's what suits your needs and the way you're going to vape how in depth and how advanced you want to get or how basic you want to stay just like buying a car everybody that buys a car is not a going to be a race car driver everybody that buys a car is not going to buy a Maserati everybody that buys a car isn't going to get a pickup truck some people need a truck because they want to haul things some people get a big luxury car and take trips across country some people get a little gas economy car because all they do is go back and forth to work into the grocery store don't be afraid to use those starter kits to begin with they're inexpensive they're quick they're easy they're simple if you're not sure if you want to vape or not it's a good way you spend 20 25 bucks somewhere around in that range if you like it there you go you spend a little bit of money you got to start you got a foot in the door and you can move up if you don't like it you spent what the price of a couple packs of cigarettes to give it a shot and if you're lucky and you know someone who vapes I'm sure they have something laying around we all do ask if you can borrow it give it a try and you spent zero dinero I have a video about the beginner's guide to e-juice I'll put a link somewhere and the next one is going to be beginner's guides to tanks give me a thumbs up subscribe and you'll find out when the next one's posted come back and check it out again I hope you found this information helpful on your quest for knowledge into the wonderful world of vaping that's the way I see it Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother.